This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Tuesday, June the 18th, 2019. It's the feast day of the martyrs Marcus and Marcellianus. As with so many great saints, they were stripped from the liturgical calendar in the Great Purge of 1969. Why, you may ask? Because we don't know their life story. The same can be said for other saints like Christopher and Philomena. What makes that extra frustrating is that the traditional criteria for being a saint and having a feast day wasn't the overly scientific analysis of what someone wrote or preached like it is today. It was the lived experience of the church. So there was only one real question. Did the faithful over the course of years turn again and again to that saint for intercession and for miracles? That's it. That's the only question that mattered prior to the 1960s. And so we have some important people like Pope Gregory IV or Tertullian who are not saints. And we have some totally unknowns like Marcus and Marcellianus who had significant followings and to whom many miracles are attributed who are held as saints. And that's not limited to the early church. St. Edward the Confessor in England was one of half a dozen English kings to whom miracles were attributed and whose tomb was a place of pilgrimage. But that all thinned out rather quickly. Edward the Confessor, though, still had a following 200 years later, even when his family line had been replaced by his enemies and his reputation had been tarnished by their propaganda. Nowadays, the process of canonization has given us several saints whose writings were surely excellent, but who don't seem to have any real following, even in their own place. Saints Marcus and Marcellianus might well ask why they were scrubbed from the calendar after 1,600 years of prayerful devotion to make way for these, quote, modern saints whose following has yet to endure even several decades. Well, today was the day in 1815 when Napoleon Bonaparte finally had his Waterloo. It was a Sunday in Belgium, and Napoleon was at the head of about 70,000 troops. He was facing the so-called Seventh Coalition, consisting of the UK, the Netherlands, and Prussia, led by the Duke of Wellington and the Austrian von Blücher. Napoleon had already lost once. He had been exiled to Elba and then managed to return from exile, build up an army along the way, and take back the reins of France under the noses of the people who had just kicked him out. In short, Europe was well enough done with his chicanery. So they put together about 120,000 troops and chose a battlefield right outside of Brussels. Well, we don't remember the name Waterloo for nothing. Napoleon lost badly, and he was exiled again, this time to the island of St. Helena off the coast of the African nation of Namibia. Thus ends the story of the Napoleonic era. And finally today in 1940, the Prime Minister of the UK, Sir Winston Churchill, stood in the House of Commons to give his most famous speech. It was just about a month after he had taken over as Prime Minister. The speech was the third in a series which are all remembered as masterworks of oratory. The first was the so-called blood, toil, tears, and sweat speech on 13 May, just after the first German offensive in the West. And then he said, we shall fight on the beaches in June, when Germany took Belgium and northern France. Today, just after the French armistice, Churchill stood and said, quote, If we fail, then the whole world, including the United States, including all that we have known and cared for, will sink into the abyss of a new dark age, made more sinister and perhaps more protracted by the lights of perverted science. Let us therefore brace ourselves to our duties and so bear ourselves that if the British Empire and its commonwealth last for a thousand years, men will say this was their finest hour. And these echoes of the St. Crispin's Day speech resounded in the House of Commons and left us with Sir Winston Churchill's most excellent speech. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.